Thank you, Mary Ann, and welcome into the Lord's house on this uh, fourth Sunday in Lent. Uh, great to have you uh, with us today. I'd like to take a moment to welcome any visitors that are with us this morning, and we encourage you to sign our guest book and pick up a handbook if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Our order of service today will be the Divine Service setting number four in the front portion of your hymnal. That'll uh, start on page 203. And since we are in the season of Lent, we will be omitting the glory and excelsis and the response after the epistle. Our opening hymn for today is 420. It is entitled, Christ, the Life of All the Living. We will stand on the seventh and final verse.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for this fourth Sunday in Lent is printed in your worship folder from Psalm 103, verses 1 to 3. Congregational tune is 717. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. brought them back from foreign lands, from east and west and north and south. Our service of the word will continue at the top of page 204 with our Kyrie in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all the faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son was lifted on the cross for our redemption. May we look to him in the way we should go, knowing that he walks with us to eternal life. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is found in Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9, and is printed on the back of your worship book. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the, the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if the serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The lesson for this fourth Sunday in Lent is in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. You'll find those verses printed on the back of your worship folder, and we will read them together. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Will you please rise for our gospel reading? Holy Gospel this morning is in St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. 
For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our confession of faith this morning will be in the words of the Nicene Creed. That's on page 206, and we will confess these words together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, made in one substance of the Father, 
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Textual service base for our message is our Old Testament lesson from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Dear friends in Christ, do you ever get frustrated? I'd like to share with you something that happened to me recently and see if you haven't had something similar happen to you. We received a mailing with a woman's name on it at our address. Now, it looked like a bill from a lab in the southern United States. So I saved it. A few months later, the same thing. It had an address that is undeliverable, so I sent it there. A month or so goes by, we get the same mailing. This time I take it and I send a letter to the company, basically saying we have lived here for 25 years and nobody with that name lives here. Doesn't work. Here comes another one, same name. So I call. They commend me for not opening the mail. And they said they would send me something to clear it up. Nothing ever came except another lab bill. This time, I shredded it. Have you ever had the same experience? You try to do the right thing, and it is just heartache and frustration. You know, we're going to see some frustrated people today. But the difference is, they are not doing the right thing. And the Lord is going to send them a bill, all right, and it won't be pleasant. Let's see what happens when God's people try going the other way. One thing we all remember about 9-11 is that the first responders went the other way when people were fleeing the Twin Towers. They risked and gave their lives for others. They purposely were going the other way that fateful day into the danger. The people of Israel complained again against the Lord when he seemed to be sending them the other way. It says in our text, from Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt here to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. What they didn't realize, of course, was that what God was doing was part of his grand design. Do you ever get frustrated and miss the Lord's grand design? Why are things going this way, you might say? This cannot be happening. Where's the promised land? You've got me wandering in the desert. And at times the Lord must literally get sick to his stomach. When we ignore prayer before meals, we regard worship as mechanical, or we diminish the power of baptism and the Lord's Supper, we make desolate that which is holy and pure. And so God addresses it with the law. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many in Israel died. Now he sent these fiery serpents for three reasons. One, he showed them his just anger for their rejection of his grace and protection these last 40 years. Second, He wanted to show, again, that their rebellion was the direct cause of their problems. 
their previous rebellion had them wandering in the desert and not proceeding into the promised land. And the third reason, of course, is to show them their sin and lead them to repentance. Now that's a wonderful lesson we can learn from our forefathers. We, too, become frustrated with God's timing. Instead of direction through God's word and prayer, we take off for the desert. And we end up wandering aimlessly. And when we go the other way, away and apart from God, this is what happens. Now all this death finally brought the Israelites to their senses. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent, and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Isn't our Old Testament lesson in beautiful harmony today with our gospel on this fourth Sunday in Lent? Jesus says in our gospel, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. You see, this action was necessary because serpents were idolatrous objects of veneration among the earliest peoples. But the rescue from death by God wrought through the bronze serpent was only a type of what he intended. When his incarnate son bore our sin and was lifted on the cross. When faith looks up to Christ crucified, God saves from eternal death all victims of the fatal venom of sin. And when we slip into going the other way, when we let frustration and rebellion dominate our thoughts, this antidote is provided by the Lord. He has absolved us freely and fully. We are spared, spared hell and granted heaven. And then when we go the Lord's way, he prompts us then to share this antidote. Our offerings, our prayers, our service, and our worship all work as the antidote for sinners everywhere. We need all of this daily and richly. So how about this? Let's go the Lord's way. Right into heaven. Amen. Please rise for the prayer of the church. With our petitions this morning, I'll finish with the words, Lord, in your mercy, will you please respond, hear our prayer. O oh Lord God, draw us into your light. Expose wherever we, like your people of old, have thought, spoken, and acted against you that in repentance we might look to your Son, lifted up on the cross, and be saved from your righteous wrath. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of hosts, you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bless the work of missionaries as they carry this gospel to the ends of the earth that many may hear of your love in Christ Jesus and be saved through him. 
Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you had Moses lift up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, thereby foreshadowing your son's own lifting up on the cross. Teach us to hear in the Old Testament the promises and pictures of the coming Christ, who is their Savior and ours. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter both John Hardy and Ron Quasney. We thank you for the progress that they are both making. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to heal their bodies, to give them the strength that they need to return home, and to guide them always. Keep them in their day of trouble from falling into faithless fear, and uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for safe travels for Lucy, Johnny, and Dolores Webb as they will be flying back to China to see Lucy's parents. We pray that everything goes well, that you be with the pilots and all the work for the airline industry, and that you would guide their air flight, get them to China safely, that they might have a good time with family, and then return them safely back to us. Continue to guide and bless them as they have this time away with family. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our worship will continue now with the preface on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, 
take eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Be God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated.
Lord's blessings be upon you. Uh, just a couple of announcements I'd like you to take note of uh, this morning. We are having our seminary door offering, so please be aware of that. And seminarian Jim Martin and uh, hopefully his family will be here uh, April 14th. Uh, so he'll preach and uh, conduct adult Bible class, so we look forward to that. Uh, also, uh, next Sunday, uh, 7.30, we're going to have our men's uh, breakfast Bible study. Uh, we did one of these in the fall. Uh, we did uh, part one, and we're going to be doing part two. But if you missed part one, we'd love to have you join us. And I did hear uh, we are going to have biscuits and gravy, and I'm not sure what else, but uh, that'll be in the basement of the church. And then a reminder, you got a couple more weeks for Easter lilies. You can sign up uh, on the table in the narthex. Are there any other announcements? Peace the Lord be with you. Thank you. Thank you. 